Hello and welcome to another Garden News Watch Hour video. I'm your host Demi and today is a 12 hour painting challenge. So I have uh, 53 models here. They are Uruk Scouts of various forms with uh, characters and whatnot at the front and there's some ferals at the back. Um, a bit of an airbrush booth. So I'm going to try and challenge myself to get these two tabletop standard um, within 12 hours. Uh, it's going to be a big push. Uh, I've got a couple of airbrushing uh, stages and then it's purely paintbrush work. So I'm going to give myself half an hour for lunch and half an hour for dinner but apart from that I will be sat here all day uh, chatting on Discord with friends uh, to try and get this done. Uh, a couple of reasons for doing this. One, uh, I had a real hunkering for Eric Scouts recently. Um, just wanted to get them done and get them on the table because I played a bit with the Oglet Scouts Legendary Legion um, and number two I want to see how far I can push myself uh, in 12 hours uh, I have no idea how much I'll get done um, it's just can I get it done or can I get as far as I think I can and concentrate for 12 hours so let's go after the release of Warren Rohan and Quest of the Ringbearer from the Dust Trashy Battle Game, the legendary legions of Uglet Scouts and Lutzer Scouts have intrigued me. Having played a few games with Uglet Scouts a couple of months ago, I've wanted to get my collection of Uruk Scouts painted. My plan all along was to keep the paint scheme super simple for this challenge so I could try to get this large number of models done. So after zealously highlighting all the models before this challenge, I went back for a corpus black underspray with the airbrush from about a 45 degree angle, followed by a dried bark airbrush from the top to cover the majority of the leather as a base colour. This enabled me to get a good jump start on the large areas while still maintaining the natural light in the shadows. I know I know I'm not wearing a full respirator when airbrushing. Uh, previously I haven't spent lots of continuous time using my airbrush, but I thought of setting that with a little face mask would at least help. Uh, I think I need to adjust the way I hold the airbrush so that my hand doesn't feel as tense, or practice with it a lot more to try and gain more control. Uh, I'm going to do the latter and, pr and see how precise I can get. Uh, I may need to upgrade my airbrush to aid this, uh, but I do have a solid recommendation from Stu Mack uh, of Out of the Flying Pan podcast. Uh, which I think I'll act on in the new year. The first paintbrush colour on was Iron Breaker, which I calculated at about three and a half minutes per model before this challenge, which seems like no time at all, but these scouts don't have a lot of metal armour and I may have forgotten that the large shields uh, have <laughs> bigger surface areas that need two coats, otherwise it would have looked really patchy. Uh, it was during this time that I was joined uh, by a few guys on Discord, where I was showing off my progress all day. Um, Louis from Belgium and Combat Zebra from New Zealand dropped by to see the progress. Uh, I'm really sorry Combat Zebra, I didn't catch your first name. Right, let's tell you what is actually on the table. Uh, so after doing, digging through my case of models and sorted Tupperware, I got out all my Urukai scouts. Uh, there's 36 plastic models, 12 of each war gear types, so sword and shield, just sword and Urukai bone. I have two metal Uruk scout banners, uh, two Uruk scouts carrying Merriam Pippin from the amateur Amon Hen box set. Uh, the other warriors I was including, because they fit the scout theme, are six feral Urukai. Uh, as they follow the same paint scheme with minimal colours. So I've just finished lunch. Uh, the silver and the bronze are done. We are 4 hours 45 in. I think a little bit behind what I thought I might be doing. Um, however, I think the silver is the biggest and kind of tricky parts. I um, think I might go with skin next. No, no. Gawthor Brown next, I think. Uh, get that done. It shouldn't actually be too long on each. It's just a bit of uh, kind of shoulder pads or or sleeves or, and a bit around the kind of tunic. But here they are. 
here is everything. Um, all 53 models. So uh, I'm going to get cracking again and start my timer again. On top of all the warrior models, I chose to include the heroes that lead the warriors across both legendary legions and one that fits the lightly armoured scout theme. Firstly, in, is Lurtz and, in Lurtz and Ugluck scouts you need Lurtz and Ugluck, uh, followed by Malherd to give the additional movement to the whole army. For even more movement, a Nuriko drummer is essential for both these legions. The other two heroes included are the other heroes from the Uruk Scout Command Pack. Uh, the Uruk Shaman without armor, the one fitting into the scout theme, and the final hero is the previously unreleased Uruk Scout Captain with 200 weapon. I love this model. I've wanted one for a long time, but never seen one for a good price before it was re-released. As I mentioned over my lunch break, the Ironbreaker stage of the print job took longer than I thought. At this point I spent over three and a half hours painting silver, and was very happy to move on. At this point it felt like I could salvage the lost time in the next few stages to get the wash on the models at the end of the challenge. I chose to do Gothel Brown following the Ironbreakers so that when I came to the skin colour I could cover up any mistakes when working at a faster speed. After working through the heroes and picking out pieces of cloth I thought would give the best composition in the end, I moved on to the troops and just tried to work at a fast pace to try and make up the lost time earlier in the day. This stage went quicker than I thought. Uh, in all, it took me about two and a half hours to get Gorth around onto all 53 models. This was helped by not having to do the colour on the Feral Uruk, Uruk and Shaman. And we're back. So I've just had like a 15 minute kind of toilet and snack break um, and I'll show you where I'm up to. Um, I've just finished all the Gawthor Brown on these chips. Um, obviously along with all the silver. Uh, I'm going to change it up next and do uh, the corn red next which is the skin um, and hopefully they should be looking a lot more Uruk like. Um, I'm falling more and more behind schedule I think um, I've got so there it is that far gone so I've got like four and a half hours left um, if I can get the Mornfang Brown and the Corn Red done in that time that would be excellent um, and then it means I can just do a quick airbrush wash hopefully <coughs> um, and they'll look presentable um, that's the plan at least Knowing I had to pick up the pace, I really put effort into painting the corn red onto the skin. It started very optimistically. Uh, with solid areas of skin wrapped around the models and the minimal small areas that needed delicate work, I felt like I was making really good progress. I also like painting the skin near the end of the base coats of any model I do, because this stage for me brings the model to life and gives you an idea of the final composition. After plying through the skin, I felt good about the final outcome that was possible. However, I did notice that the time was slowly winding away. I was distracted through the time by some gu more guys on Discord who were also having a holiday. day. Uh, Dave from Yorkshire with his crazy, whimsical stories of pranking housemates and friends from university, and Antoine from Indiana in the US. This was such a fun part of the afternoon, reliving past glories and stories when we were all younger. It did prove to slow down the painting at some point, it's due to the physical movements of the giggles. It was during the skin I paused progress for dinner, some lovely chicken, halloumi and roasted veg from my fiancé. This was the moment where I realised that my neck and shoulders were starting to ache a little, but I knew I didn't have that long left to paint, about two and a half hours. Once I got back and resumed my session, I knew it was clear I wasn't going to get the all over shade on that I wanted, but nonetheless I pushed through to get as much as done as I could. This process was slowed slightly with the feral urukai. Having the metal on them already and all the little ring piercings on the skin, I tried so hard to avoid these areas, but in some cases I had to drop my human iron break to get the colour back. 
Also, Zenithly highlighting these guys was good to see the details, but painting the red over the white meant I needed another thin coat to get the depth of colour I wanted. I had an hour and 20 minutes left on the clock when I finally started Mornprank Brown, which was used on, on the cloth attached to the helmets of the scouts and the strapping across the models, including uh, belts and gauntlet straps. This obviously seems like very little time to get all of this brown done, and you'd be right. I pushed hard to get as much done as I could. By this point it was about 10pm and I'd started working at 8 o'clock in the morning, so I was starting to flag a little but I had a huge second wind to get more fine brown on as many of the models as I could. Since finishing this challenge I've finished off the more fine brown on the last 18 models and this took me about an hour, so the time pressure was definitely a good thing to get a lot of hobbying done. So here we have it, 53 models painted in 12 hours. I started the day with a few questions for myself. Could I get it all done? Would I enjoy painting all day? Would I be happy with the result I achieved? Did I bite off more than I could chew? Addressing question one, they aren't finished, and yes, I didn't get as much done as I wanted, but this whole process was really, really fun. See how far I could push myself in a single, painting, single day painting session. I spent on average of 13 and a half models, models, minutes on each model, which I think is certainly no time at all, seeing as how it took 3 hours and 40 minutes to do 4 Warriors of Rohan recently. So I'm happy with the outcome. I didn't actually get bored with the solid blocks and colours, and I did get slightly disheartened when doing the Iron Breaker just because it took a fair bit longer than I originally thought. I always thought the challenge was going to be a push, but I thought I had a decent chance of getting to the wash stage. Since this wasn't the case, it's meant my mind has slipped into what to do with the models next. The plan is to finish the models before the end of November, and then have a bit of an army showcase with them. I think I'll go with a wash and edge highlight on some other cloth and spend a bit more time on the heroes. Overall, what did I learn from this process? When so when you set yourself a deadline and then you really strive to get uh, an army or a project done, it can be done. Uh, it's similar to setting a target for a tournament, um, but obviously we can't do that in these COVID times. Uh, secondly, chatting to friends whilst you're hobbying is amazing. Um, over the last few months I've done this more and more on Discord, uh, obviously due to not being able to meet up, etc. And having that interaction and seeing each other's progress is really, really helpful um, and really encouraging. Um, plus, I've made friends from across uh, the country, across Europe, uh, across the Atlantic um, over these last few months, and that's purely down to Discord. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and the challenge that I set myself. Uh, if you've liked this video and this kind of content, please let me know because I'm going to try and change up and figure out different ways of doing things rather than just kind of bang stock talking to the camera. Uh, so yeah, if, you, if you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, please comment, share, and finally subscribe. And we'll see you soon.